Today we have the 2024 Nissan Frontier with the hard body edition. So this is a retro take on the Frontier going all the way back and it's even got the same kind of red paint and I think it looks pretty cool, but I wanna hear your thoughts. We're gonna take a full detailed look at the exterior, the interior, get it out on the road for a test drive and maybe see should you take this or the Pril 4X. All right, y'all, let's take a look at the exterior details of this hard body edition. So this hard body edition is a $3,800 add-on, actually about $3,900 to the SV crew cab. For this generation, Nissan, Nissan continues their body on frame construction. So this is still built like a truck. And this hard body model is gonna give us a black fascia, the black grille, all these black accents right here. You don't get the lava red like you get with that Pro 4X on the logo. But we've got recovery hooks down here and an aluminum skid plate as part of this hard body model. This is based off of the SV, so keep that in mind. So you get halogen headlights, halogen fog lights, even the incandescent turn signal, whereas with the Pro models, you get LED. One other thing is right up here, the little hood graphic. You get more than the hood graphic. You get the 4x4 graphic right here. We've got some pretty large fender flares as well as that sport bar in the back. In addition to that, you get black door handles. You've got black mirrors right here. It is glossy black to match the front, not the cheap flat black. And you get 17 inch heritage wheels. So what do you think of the way this looks? It's also paired with all-terrain tires. One other thing we get here with this one is the rails on the side there. There's no steps, you just get the rails. Like I said, heritage wheels, the sport bar right there. The dimensions are the same at about 210 inches long and it's just a crew cab available. But surprisingly, we actually get LED here with the tail light, whereas you don't up front and the graphic on the back here. What do you all think of the way this looks? One more little detail, aside from the black fascia and bumper back here, we get a little exhaust finisher, so they call it on the hard body. All right, let's take a look at the truck bed. So the Frontier can come with a five foot bed like this or a six foot bed on the SV long wheelbase or on a king cab. But this one and all the ones I've showed you have the five foot bed. This is a locking tailgate. It's also a soft damped opening tailgate. And we got a few extras in here. So we've got Nissan's Utilitrack system as an option right there. The sport bar actually kind of fits right into that as you can see on the back there. So you've got the Utilitrack tie downs that you can move pretty much all over the bed. You've got fixed tie downs in each corner as well. And there's even LED lighting back here on each side. Overall, it's a nice bed for being a small bed. And one other big pro is that compared to last generation, the bed height was actually raised about an inch and a half. Now this one's going to give us the smart key system. We also get remote start on here. Typical Nissan key fob in the way that they're smart key system works is to lock it or unlock it with this button right there. Climb inside and we've got the seats from the SV, you know, the Pro 4X that I've showed you. We've had different seats, but overall, most of the time, the Nissan seats are pretty comfortable. You've kind of got a moderate amount of bolstering and this uh, cloth material in here, it's pretty nice. It actually feels soft. It doesn't have that hard kind of textured feel like this does. Maybe it's not as durable, I don't know. But then you've got power adjustments right here. The only thing this doesn't have is a tilt. So you can adjust the height, but there's no tilt adjustment. And the lumbar support is still a lever right back here. Steering wheel is leather wrapped, which is nice. It feels pretty good as well. You've got this four spoke design and it's also heated. The one annoying thing with it though is that it is only tilt adjustable, no telescoping, kind of annoying. Heated seats on here, this is an upgrade. You don't always get heated seats, two tier heated seats and the heated steering wheel. So that's a lot like the Pro 4X that I've showed you before. You can get heated seats, heated steering wheel, kind of a nicer as far as like uh, comfort features go, but still get this hard body look. And overall, I really don't have any complaints with these seats. I've had pretty good comfort driving it around quite a bit. Climbing into the back real quick right here, you've got some padding on this armrest, a good grab handle and a really big bottle holder right there. Plus there's even a grab handle here. And one thing I forgot to mention, on the passenger side, they get a grab handle up front as well as a grab handle over there. One nice thing is that you've got split folding seats in here and there's storage on that side. Under this one, we have our subwoofer or our amplifier, the speaker system here, but you lift up with this lever. I'm five foot nine sitting behind myself. It is tight, but it's certainly passable for 
this class of a truck. If you need more legroom, you're gonna need to go full size. Then we've got two USB charging ports and a 120 volt plug. No AC vents back here, you gotta rely on everything up front. Fold the seat down, and you've got this center folding armrest with, which actually has big cup holders and some padding. And I can still sit up tall in here, which is good. You know, you got a pretty straight cab. Plus, it's always nice to get a sliding rear window. Now let's talk about the interior. This is gonna be brief, but you've got push button start right there. I've covered the Frontier interior before a couple of times. But one little complaint that I have is the layout of the steering wheel controls. It's a very big spread. Nothing is super clear as far as like which one of these skips a song. You know, you get used to it, obviously. There's no controls on the back. This side's a little bit smaller, but it's a big spread over here. You get used to it, but not my favorite control setup. Steering wheel is comfortable to hold though. And this digital display in front of us gives you a lot of information. It doesn't quite have the same kind of page setups that I would like to see or customization of that. But there is a ton of information that you can scroll through and be able to see, including even driver assist features, music, all your trip computer stuff, vehicle specific info. And you can customize a lot of vehicle specific settings on here, not just the cluster necessarily. And you've got analog on the sides. This is honestly my preferred setup as far as analog gauges with your RPM and speed, but you can still have a digital speedometer and other digital info in there. Coming over, kind of like big trucks, we've got a little storage pad up there. This is actually nice and rubberized too, so it's kind of grippy. Now, this model does not have as big of a screen as the Pro model that I've showed you before. This one has an eight inch, the Pro has a nine inch. You get Apple CarPlay and Android Auto, but it does have to be plugged into one of the ports down there, USB-A or USB-C. But the screen, you know, it's kind of your typical Nissan. It's got the same menu system, and setup that we've seen for a little while now. I wish it was updated, but it's still fairly easy to operate. And I really do appreciate the physical controls here with the volume and tuning knob. Auto stop start button, turn that off right there. Dual zone climate control in here, easy to use, nice physical controls as well. Your four wheel drive is right over here. The one thing I've said before is I wish we had an auto four wheel drive, but we don't. On the other side, you get a 12 volt power outlet and then our controls down there, even parking sensors, heated seats, heated steering wheel and your charging ports. Plus there's one storage bin there. And if we move back, there's another storage bin right back here. Shifter pretty much out of the way there. And even one of these gigantic jugs fits in here pretty well. Center folding armrest. I like how big this is or the center uh, console armrest. It's soft lift it up out of the way. There's no charging ports in there, but this is kind of a deep area overall. Nissan gives us a locking glove box. I like to see that. It's kind of skinny, but at least you got it. Now this particular model gives us a manual flipping mirror. I honestly like that. Still get sunglass holders, pop overhead, regular interior lighting, and then pull our visor out, slide it out. You have the ability, availability to slide. The Pro models will give you a moonroof. This one does not have it. Pro can also give us the auto dim and garage controls, which is also optional on the SV. You know, you have that sliding window back there, but it is manual. One other thing to note is that we, we will get an optional 10 speaker Fender audio system. So you can jam out in here with a pretty nice audio system. Throw it in reverse. This one's just got your basic backup camera, but I like how we have the hitch line, which moves with your guidance lines. All right, y'all, we are now behind the wheel of this Frontier hard body. Now, you might be thinking, does this get a change in horsepower or powertrain specs? No, it stays the same. So, under the hood, you get Nissan's 3.8 liter. It's their VQ V6. It's nice that we still get a V6. Good displacement size too. 310 horsepower and 281 pound-feet of torque paired with a nine-speed automatic transmission. So this one is the 4x4 model. You can still get a two-wheel drive model. You can even get the Pro X, which is the two-wheel drive Pro model. Miles per gallon is not great. This one gets up to 23 mpg on the highway and towing for the Frontiers changes on the trim a little bit. It's in the mid 6,000 pound range. 
not class leading, not bad, certainly feasible for most people with a mid-size pickup. Now, first impression here is that the Frontier, all of them, no matter what trim you get, feel more traditional. And that's, to me, I like it. To you, that might not be a good thing. And what I mean by that is, it's got hefty steering. Nissan gave this hydraulic steering, so it's not over boosted, electric, kind of super lightweight steering. This is kind of hefty, tough steering. And I personally like that. This is also a body on frame vehicle, so you can feel the bumps. You've got a rigid platform. So it's not a soft, cushy, plush ride like you get with some of the unibody vehicles or the independent suspension type vehicles like, let's say, uh, you know, the Honda Ridgeline or the Ford Maverick, some of those types of things. This is nothing like those. This still feels like your traditional style truck in every way. Acceleration has been smooth with this transmission on a day-to-day -day basis. There have only been a few times where I've really felt some kind of jerky, clunky shifts. Um, but I grew up driving a truck. I drew one, drove one in high school and in college, and I miss it. I don't have one anymore, and I just thoroughly enjoy driving the Frontier. It's small enough to make it easier to drive in town and park and live with, but it's got the capability that most people would need with a pickup whether you want the off-road versions or you want four-wheel drive or you want a tow it can handle a lot of what you need it's just got a small bed on most of them now one thing that I want to mention is that Nissan actually gave us laminated glass here it's a windy day so you can hear some noise but it is a quieter overall pickup than the previous generation even though it still feels pretty similar you just got a little bit more modern touches in here compared to the previous one now as we get around this turn i'm gonna put the hammer down let this engine go when you new hammer on it sometimes it takes a little bit for a vehicle to drop down and go but uh once it gets going it gets going and it sounds pretty nice got a decent size engine and a little bit of pedal drops down smoothly and gives us the power now one thing that this does not have is a trailer brake controller in here we've got the four-wheel drive controls over here we've got a downhill assist over here you have a tow haul mode but you don't have a brake controller most of you probably won't need to use it considering the payload ability with this but like i said driving the frontier it's enjoyable if you are used to and like driving trucks if you've got a family might not be ideal maybe not as soft and smooth as you want but this is what you get with nissan and i like how they're keeping it kind of retro along with this body style one more hammer down and the brakes bite pretty good ergonomics wise before we go here i like the screen it's easy to reach you've got physical controls the only thing i really complain about on the interior is the steering wheel controls not my favorite but it's a small complaint storage practicality here it's all good let's go ahead and wrap things up so to wrap things up on this hard body frontier, I like the way it looks. It's something unique, it's retro. You can still get this outfitted similar to the Pro 4X, almost exactly. This is almost the same price as the most recent Pro 4X that I drove, about $1,000 less. So if you got them equipped about the same, which one would you go for? I'd love to hear your thoughts down below what you think of the frontier in general and this particular hard body edition. Thank you so much for watching and have a great day.